Hello guys, this is Red from Red's Third Dimension Gaming, and today I'm bringing you another review for Cyber Dimension Neptunia for Goddesses Online. Finally, the next big game in the Hyper Dimension Neptunia series is now available for North America. Selling more than 70,000 units in Japan for the PlayStation 4, Four Goddesses Online has already made a splash in its homeland. Is Cyber Dimension Neptunia Four Goddesses Online's more open landscape and gameplay style better than previous games in the series? Is the story fun and exciting? Let's find out in this review. Four Goddesses Online has a new story, characters, universe, and much more. Cyber Dimension Neptunia's story is focused around the four goddesses Neptune, Noir, Blanc, and Virk, who have saved the world an endless amount of times. In this game, the four of them have been chosen as beta testers for the latest version of a popular online game labeled as Four Goddesses Online. The guardian spirit Bouquet is sent to help guide the goddesses on their journey. She explains the story of FGO. Four goddesses descended from the divine realm into this empty world. Purple Heart, the goddess of fate. Black Heart, the goddess of prosperity. Whiteheart, the goddess of order. Greenheart, the goddess of fertility. The four goddesses created this world and named it Asgard, and they vowed to protect it. Over a thousand years ago, the goddesses sealed away an evil invader known as the Demon King Jester. After attempting to steal the Lean Verd's magic, he was defeated. The Lean Verd is the world tree, also known as the Tree of Life. It is the source of Osgard's magical power. It gives life to all things in the world, both big and small. Because the fighting against the devious Demon King Jester took such a toll on all our four goddesses, they had to leave Osgard and created four sacred treasures which now contain the remaining power of the goddesses. Bouquet's grandmother was told by the goddesses, when the world is in danger once again, those carrying our blessings shall appear. Grant them the sacred treasures and call to us. Keep guard of the treasures until that time comes. With this, the goddesses retreated to the divine realm and slumbered. Evil has returned to this world and our characters are the chosen one. In this game, we must collect the four sacred treasures and awaken the goddesses. With their power, we can defeat the evil. This is where the story begins. There are lots of comedic moments, plot twists that I didn't expect, and so much more in this game. What in the world are you doing? You've given the poor girl a nosebleed. Ugh, bouncy, bouncy. You gotta be freaking kidding me. <sighs> no, calm down, Blonde. I can't let something so stupid get to me. It'll take an average player around 20 hours to beat the first five chapters of Four Goddesses Online. After you get the first ending, you can continue the story further and watch the true ending. There is a total of eight quest levels in this game and an online mode to further enhance your experience. This game is not for people who don't like turn-based gameplay. Compile Heart has completely done away with this battle style. Instead, the game has something similar to Sword Art Online, and it's also much better than Acel World versus Sword Art Online. No competition at all, it's much better. It is also similar to the other non-turn-based gameplay style Neptunia games, such as Mega Tegmension and Neptunia U. I also think it's much better than those games too. Players have a more open world concept with less linearity than past games. Players can smash the square button for normal attacks or hold down L1 and a button, circle, triangle, X, or square, in order to activate one of your many skills that you set up. Players can set up two different sets of skills. You might run into a situation where you need to use only magic or only need to use physical attacks. Also, you might like more than just four skills. 
you only can have four in each set. So maybe you want to use a different set of skills, so you can just switch over to the other set. Not only can players use normal and skill attacks, but they also can use an awakening attack mode. Every time a player attacks, he or she will gradually fill up their awakening gauge. You can use an awakening skill attack by pressing the L3 button when your awakening gauge is at level three or higher. By using this skill in awakening mode, you get to be invincible and deal a greater amount of damage. Defense in Four Goddesses Online is a time managed system. You must time the enemy's attack if you want to block and counterattack them. This is by far one of my favorite features of the game. Also, you can even counterattack while being in the air. While in the air in some games, you cannot counter or block attacks. Four Goddesses Online is different and better than most games in the same genre. If you are too slow or cannot figure out how to counter, you can simply block and take less damage. Majority of the time when you counter, you will take no damage and get to attack the opponent. There is also strategic play in the game as well. Players can use the drop down menu and, and come up with a plan of attack. You can choose to be aggressive and have your characters do an all out attack, or you can even plan for your characters to stay back and take care of one another by healing. There are many options to choose from, and the strategy is up to you. Along with strategic play, some opponents will require a certain technique in order to defeat them. Metal Dogoos and Big Dogoos require players to break an opponent down. Once their break meter has been depleted, then you can finish them off much easier. This will usually kill and take care of the two aforementioned enemies, the Dogoos. But in order to defeat bosses with more health, it will require using this strategy multiple times. So maybe two or three times depending on how much health they have. There's always a different way that you can approach certain enemies and bosses. For instance, to break enemies faster, you need to use either magic or magic skill attacks. Another way that you can break an enemy is to apply magic to all your party's weapons and have them attack as they normally would. There are many ways to take down your opponent. Additionally, there is an online mode that players can use to either play with friends or other people around the world. Most of the time, it's very high-leveled, skilled players. Players can choose to find a server that is open and play with others, or create their own server. Similar to Bloodborne, players can choose to play with people that are using the same code setup so no randoms appear. The online is a nice feature and all, but I actually like the setup of Mega Tech Mentions online better. Hopefully players will stick around so that you don't end up having to play by yourself. While in an area, players can also survey the field or their characters. This is a neat mode if you want to take screenshots with the share button and share your experience with your buddies. Customization is back once again. Players can put eggs inside of their characters. If you haven't seen my gameplay video, I was just testing uh, YouTube a bit there, the monetization thing. You can place bunny ears on their heads and much more. There are many accessories in the game and more that are unlocked as you progress. This allows players to be creative and create amazing looking characters. Players can equip weapons, armor, gems, and accessories. Up to five accessories or gems are available to wear. There are tons of unlockables, and this provides for more gameplay and exploring. While in the battlefield, some chests will require you to use a purchasable key. These usually will contain new weapons, equipment, and accessories. The main town in the game is set up like the older games in the series, and you can see all your little chibi characters and interact with them. Sometimes you'll even get bonus scenes. Also, don't worry because none of the game has been censored. I looked back at my Japanese scenes to see if they were censored, and none of them appeared to be censored. Players can use the tutorial battle arena, buy temporary boosters called prayers, buy and sell weapons, gems, and items at the shops, and do so much more. There is a lot to do while playing a level and while in the town. There is a large cast of characters in this game too. You have your main goddesses and their sister candidates, both making a return. Around halfway through the game, you will unlock the four goddesses in their HDD forms. These are separate from your main characters and can be added to your four woman team. Then you have a roster of several non-playable characters too. Veterans such as IF, Pishi, Kampa, Uzume, Arfwar, and many more all make returns in some way or another. Most have a shop set up in town. I like that the developers included our goddesses transform forms in Cyber Dimension Neptunia. I used to love actually transforming into HDD mode and using these next forms. This game does away with that and the HDD forms are their own characters. Graphically, Cyber Dimension Neptunia is the best looking game in the series thus far. It uses Unreal Engine 4, 
but does not run as smooth as Mega Dimension Neptunia V2. It is a brand new engine for the series, so I'll let it slide here a little bit. The environments are brand new, and everything is explorable and diverse. I love that they even changed up the costumes and designs to our girls. I didn't agree with all the class changes at first, but they will have to do for now. There are many ways to utilize the characters in the game, so I am going to be very forgiving. It is also a game within a game, so it makes some sense. One major complaint about this game is that it sometimes has game-breaking mishaps. In the Japanese version during combat, I occasionally got stuck inside my AI companions and enemies. Sometimes the game crashed for other players. I never experienced the crashing on the Japanese version, but I have already experienced it on the same level twice in the North American version of the game. I deleted the game and had to reinstall it, so I lost all my progression, and because of the autosave system, I lost my prayer booster and money spent on that booster. The game autosaves once you buy a booster, so if it crashes while you're in the dungeon, you'll lose all that money and you'll lose the booster. The $30,000 ones are very expensive in the game. This game's autosave system is half-baked. Sometimes you'll have to rebuy items, like I just said, rearrange your abilities again, or start over on a level if it crashes. Thankfully, the game does allow you to save manually, but the autosave overwrites it automatically. So you still might lose your money or items if your game freezes or crashes. Hopefully an update will fix the bugs when it officially comes out for everyone. The Japanese version of the game also came with some glitches that allowed players to get out of the map and skip right to the boss or explore the inaccessible environments. I tried to do the glitches in the North American version and I haven't had any success. It appears Idea Factory International has fixed these bugs, and I hope that they fix the crashing bugs next. The AI seems to be fixed in the North American version too. They would sometimes be derpy and get stuck, therefore they would not be able to fight. To fix this problem, your characters will now automatically quickly spawn to your leading character. The bosses also don't freeze nearly as much. Sometimes they will, but it happens less often. You can play the game in either English or Japanese, and this will make a lot of fans happy. I liked most of the voice acting, but I was surprised at how Noir's new voice sounded. I was expecting something like the voice actor's previous work, and some of these games include Fairy Fencer F, Erin, the fairy. I was assuming she was gonna sound just like her, but she sounds different than that. What must you do? Okay, seriously, stop. Oh wait, I know. Keisha, battle me. If you win, then I'm all yours. Ugh, where do you think you're going? Don't run away from me, Neptune. You know, Verd, you're the first person I'd suspect of being a solo player and running away from the party. Nice to meet you. My name's Erin. I'm a fairy. Give me some food. I am the life that resides in the fury you hold in your hand. What's your name? I'm Fang. Give me some food. Nice to meet you, Fang. That sword belongs to you now. And with it, my power is yours as well. Sometimes I like her voice better on the battlefield than during her dialogue scenes. She actually has a better voice sometimes in the battlefield. I hope that they bring back Erin Fitzgerald because she's truly going to be missed. <sighs> she's one of the best voice actors in the series. Overall, Cyber Dimension Neptunia for Goddesses Online expands upon the Neptunia series with an amazing new universe. Some of these new areas have flaws, but at least we are seeing some type of new environments and graphics. The gameplay is fun, but I'm still a fan of the turn-based style of battle. It's still much better than Super Dimension, though. That game's battle system is not nearly as good as Cyber Dimension's. I highly recommend this game's gameplay over the gameplay in Acel World vs. Sword Art Online. The story is great and way better than some of the past Hyperdimension Neptunia games stories. Also, you get the panty scenes, hilarious dialogue, and great voice acting from the cast. Even though Eren is gone, we get the voice actor that played Eren from Fairy Fencer Ah, <laughs> uh, she's gonna be missed. Overall, I give this game a 9 out of 10. It's an improvement for the Neptunia series. This should be a day one purchase for fans of the series. If you would like to buy the game and also help support my channel, you can use the PlayAsia link below and also use the code R3D to get an extra $3 off your purchase. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my patrons for this month. Yo-Yo Mongo, Mike Shadow 24 and Art CMBDIA. Thank you guys for being my patrons. If you like the review and you also want to help support me, you can go over to Patreon. You can donate a dollar, you can donate five dollars, you can donate ten dollars. 
And if you're really nice, you can donate $100. But a dollar's fine, you get early access to reviews for just a dollar, and you'll help support it. If you'd like to see more gameplay for this game, I have a full walkthrough series, scenes from the game, going up on my channel right now, and you can go subscribe and check those out. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment down below, and subscribe. Let me know what is your favorite Hyperdimension Neptunia game and character. Thank you guys for watching, and see you in the next review. People from before! We haven't introduced ourselves yet, huh? I'm Neptune. Nice to meet you. But I guess there's no point in telling you that, since players can just see each other's names anyway. So you two are... Kiria and... Cross Black Cat Princess Cross? Wow, sweet names. Really? Isn't it kind of embarrassing to put princess in your name? Names with Kitty something are so overused in online games lately. They're not crosses, Neptune. They're symbols called daggers, and it's merely decoration. There's no need to pronounce them. Huh? Really? But crosses are cute. It doesn't really matter, does it? Cute? Yeah, I'm glad! That's right! Princess is quite taken with the name, yeah? By the way, all of your names seem to be the names of game industry's goddesses, but... Now that you mention it, your appearances are exactly the same too, Nya! Are you a group of impersonators, Nya? Hmm, what should we do in situations like this? Should we hide our identities? That's hardly worth answering. I doubt anyone would believe we're the real ones anyway. Wait, what are you doing, Bert? Weren't you calling yourself Greenheart in another game? Explain. In the real game industry, when Vert transforms, she's called Greenheart. So this is also playing with her real name. It's true that I was playing as Greenheart in the other four goddesses online, but I often dodge the subject of my identity. That doesn't make for a good example. And you even had that explanation for the symbol, but you were using it yourself. At the time I created the name, I was afflicted with the urge to surround it with the symbol. It no longer matters. Using symbols like that was really unavoidable. Everyone did it in the early days. Uh, well, that's what I heard. Uh, never mind. <laughs> You're even imitating how they talk! I think you all need a little more research to roleplay them properly, yeah? Hey guys, if you'd like to help support my channel, please turn off ad blocker. Also, you can donate to my Patreon for as little as a dollar or as much as a hundred dollars. Also, you can look at the links below and using those links will help support me.